Hi Laura, thank you for the meeting invite. I really appreciate you taking time to support me. Hi Arno, no worries, anytime. How can I help you? So my problem is, as I mentioned previously, I am looking for a GNSS receiver, but the too many options on the market are driving me crazy. Hence, I need some guidance. I can imagine it's challenging, but don't worry, I'll take you step by step. The first thing to consider is that we develop solutions for specific use cases, taking into account their challenges. So for us, it's crucial to identify and understand how our customers are planning to deploy and use our products because they can be used for many purposes. Yeah, you tell me about it. Let's say you are looking for meter level performance. In this case, tracking a bicycle in a forest is obviously very different to tracking a truck across a country or a container being loaded and unloaded on different platforms around the globe. I get it. Choosing a solution requires assessing specific factors. You're right. For instance, access to the sky and power sources can strongly impact the customer's journey. And we design our products always keeping these considerations in mind. That's good to know. So where should I start? Because when I look at your website, I see many options, technologies, product families, form factors and features. I understand our use case and deployment scenarios, but what is the best uBlox fit? Identifying the right technology is the first thing you should look at. In your case, you require a positioning accuracy between 10 and 1 meter, correct? Yes, that's right. Okay, and for us, this is standard precision GNSS or SPG. And here we offer several options. Let me take an example. I imagine that you continuously track a vehicle like a car, bicycle, train, etc. And in such a case, you might tolerate position interruption or not if availability is very important to you. Can you be more specific? Sure. When looking at SPG, we have the possibility of fusing sensor data with the GNSS signal to provide continuous tracking, even when the GNSS signal is obstructed by a bridge, a tunnel, or urban canyons. And here we are talking about dead reckoning, which keeps tracking no matter what. I understand. Now, I don't need constant tracking, so that's good to know what dead reckoning can provide. So, in my case, key is good performance, even if sometimes there is no position data. Excellent, you brought up a very crucial point, good performance. What does it mean in your case? Oh, this one's rather easy. I would say if I can achieve a position accuracy around two to five meters, it would make my day. And this level of performance would make my solution very appealing. And of course, my customer would be quite satisfied. Great, now something else to consider the evolution of technology, which we both know happens in no time. And depending on where the application will be deployed, you could consider using a traditional single band or a dual band GNSS receiver. Don't try to sell me a Rolls Royce when all I need is four wheels to move. No, not at all. But dual band GNSS has many benefits you should be aware of. And if they don't fit your application, then forget about the Rolls Royce. Okay, fair enough. I'm, I'm listening. Okay, our new receivers, they leverage L5 signals, which mitigate the effects of multipath errors caused by signal reflection on buildings. And this makes positioning more robust and accurate in cities. Also, the L5 frequency band is lower than L1, making it easier to coexist with cellular connectivity. And this means potential LTE harmonics don't interfere with L5 as they do with L1. And what about which signals, you know? You mean potentially related to the antenna characteristics or strong signal attenuation? In that case, L5 signals are stronger which obviously improves the reception quality. And last but not least, some GNSS constellations like the Indian Navic primarily transmit on L5. Mm. 
Yeah. Performance is important to me. So can you tell me a bit more about Singen versus Development? Sure, no problem. I mean, in environments with no multipath issues like open sky areas, both receivers show similar performance. Single band has an advantage though, because its simpler RF setup translates into low power consumption. Well, low power consumption, this is important. For single band, you should then consider our M9 or M10 families, where M stands for multi GNSS. And for dual band, check our F10 platform, where F stands for multi frequencies. Okay, I got it. Our products operate in both open sky condition and urban environment. So I might need to talk to my boss about single and dual band options. I will write this down and come back to you. Now, just one thing, you mentioned product families. So how to pick a product from among them? Okay, when you look at our families, focus on the supported bands or the power consumption, also the product variants and the key differentiators. And then you can really narrow down your choices. Remember the software compatibility between families is very high. And what about form factors? I don't see it here. Are this identical across all families? In some cases, yes, but not always. We aim to match form factors according to the target market and applications. And this overview here shows you a glimpse of the different form factors per family, from chipsets to standard modules and more advanced options. But how do I differentiate them? Within each family, we keep hardware compatibility from one generation to the next, and each form factor is pin-to-pin -pin compatible within each category. So NEOs with NEOs, Maxis with Maxis, and so on. Ah, of course. Yeah, NEO is also the oldest form factor in our standard precision GNSS family, first introduced in 2006, and no changes ever since. This ensures compatibility among our products, giving customers the flexibility to use SPG or debt reckoning solutions, all in the same footprint. So compatibility and flexibility is your goal. I got it. And this is exactly what I need. Now, how do I know which form factor is the right one for me? Okay, NEO is the largest followed by Max and Mia, the smallest one in our catalog, even smaller than a chipset design. Of course, when you reduce size, you exclude some features. Mia is compact, although it lacks that reckoning. The other form factors provide more flexibility and technology coverage, and Max is a good trade-off between size and features. So without size constraints, Neo would be a solid choice for me, right? Exactly. So for what I need, I think I should focus on the M9 or M10 family for single band. And then in case we need it, the F10 platform with dual band options would be a threat a way forward. Correct. Looks like you got it. Remember, we are here to support you through the selection to deployment journey. And if you have any further questions or need additional assistance, feel free to reach out. That sounds great. Thank you, Laura. I, again, I really appreciate your help today. Now I feel less overwhelmed and I have a clearer idea of how to make my choice. Glad to hear that. I mean, choosing the right technology can be challenging, but to find a perfect fit, you just need to understand your needs and match them with the most adequate product from our range of solutions. Always follow these simple key points to find a way. So first, you define your use case and you understand the environment. And then you select the right technology and form factor based on your specific requirements. You make it sounds too easy. Anyway, once again, thanks for the guidance. I will now explore the options we discussed and get back to you if I have any more questions. Anytime. I mean, we're here to help you succeed. I wish you a great day and good luck with your project, Anu. Thanks, you too. And to our watchers, if you have similar questions or need more information, don't hesitate to contact us. We're here to help you navigate the world of GNSS receivers 
and find the best solution for your needs. Thanks for joining.